Microsoft has had crazy ideas before, but this device might be the craziest. The Surface Laptop Studio tries to emulate its desktop counterpart, which is a tough task when you factor in that you have to fit a lot of functionality in a smaller form factor. Starting it off, the unboxing experience is simple, with the Surface itself, some paper manuals, and either a 65 watts or 102 watts power brick, depending on if you choose a Core i5 or a Core i7. The laptop uses both aluminum and magnesium for its chassis, which makes for a very durable base. The lid isn't as strong as we'd like, mainly due to the folding mechanism, but the glass on the front does help a little bit. Also, the bezels aren't the thinnest that we've seen, but the device still appears modern. Keep in mind that this is a Generation 1 device, so there will be issues that will be ironed out over time. The keyboard and touchpad are great, offering decent key travel and clicky feedback, while the pad is also hidden behind glass, which is always a plus. The angle of the fold is adjustable, giving you a lot of wiggle room to play with what's comfortable for you in your workflow. The input-output is a bit of a letdown, with only two Thunderbolt 4 ports, an audio jack, and a charging port. The main star of the show, however, is hidden behind a 14.4-inch slab of glass. The PixelSense display has a resolution of 2400 by 1600 pixels, delivering a sharp and vibrant image. The IPS panel is super bright, with a peak brightness of 500 nits and a high contrast ratio. What's more important is the full sRGB coverage and very good accuracy, especially if you apply our design and gaming profile. The display also has good integration with other Surface accessories, such as the Surface Pen or the Dial. The display works with a 120Hz refresh rate, which will suit you both in productivity and gaming, which you will be able to do a surprising amount of, but more on that later. Add the clear audio from the quad speaker setup and you get a multimedia champion for a pretty amazing movie night. However, there is some PWM usage, which is generally harmful to your eyes. In the case of the Surface Studio, the pulsations have a high frequency and a smaller amplitude above 65% brightness, which aren't as harmful. Using our HealthGuard profile can completely get rid of the PWM. We'll leave a link to our profiles in the description. Only 2 per 100 people watching this video are subscribers. If you decide to just start following us, we'll be able to reinvest more in our laboratory thus making even more helpful videos for you. Thank you, you're awesome. Despite using the Tiger Lake H35 series of processors, the Surface Laptop Studio manages to last for 10 hours and 30 minutes of web browsing, or 10 hours and 10 minutes of video playback. When it comes to performing, the Core i7-11370H isn't the best CPU for the job, delivering unimpressive results and falling behind some much more efficient processors like the Ryzen 7 5800U. On the other hand, the GPU performance is a lot better thanks to the included RTX 3050Ti or its professional counterpart the RTX A2000. Sadly, the discrete graphics are only available with the said Core i7, leaving the Core i5-11300H with the Iris Z graphics G7. While the RTX 3050Ti has a power limit of only 50 watts, it still can run most games at good settings and frame rates. The fans on the inside aren't spinning at full throttle most of the time, which meant a quiet user experience. If you're not gaming, you'd rarely hear them working. The laptop is generally comfortable to use even under full load with the hotspot on the base reaching a pretty standard temperature of 41.9 degrees Celsius. Microsoft made all the mistakes that they could have when introducing a new product. While they wanted to create a powerful portable device for designers and professionals, they managed to put out an underperforming mess that lacks upgradability and the needed performance to be placed ahead of offerings from other brands. There is a lesson to be learned from this, mainly the folding display mechanism, the cooling, and maybe the choice of hardware. We recommend skipping this one out and waiting for a generation 2 or a generation 3, where most of the issues are hopefully fixed. What do you think of the Microsoft Surface Laptop Studio, and what do you expect Microsoft to improve with further generations of the product? Share your opinion down below. If you want to see the rest of the tests and more details about the device, you can check out our in-depth review. The link is in the video description below.